This video is going to be about pyrimidine synthesis. It's part two of a three-part video series, so keep your eyes posted for the final part three video, which will be posted after this video. Let's dive right into the biochemistry. In pyrimidine synthesis, you start with glutamine and carbon dioxide, and that gets converted to carbamoyl phosphate. The enzyme that catalyzes this conversion is carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 2. Again, synthetase should tell you that you're synthetasing, or in other words, synthesizing whatever word comes before synthetase. So in this case, carbamoyl phosphate. Please note that in this reaction, ATP is used, which in turn goes to ADP plus phosphate plus glutamate. So as part of this step, we're utilizing ATP and we're coming away with glutamate because of these chemical conversions. Now carbamoyl phosphate will then undergo a series of approximately three steps in which it's ultimately converted to erotic acid. These, the three steps that are shown but not shown here are not necessarily important for you to know for exams, but what you do need to know is what pieces go in or come out in these three steps. So in the first step, you need to use aspartate in the second step, water is a byproduct. And in the third step, you need to put in NAD+. Okay, so then we have erotic acid. And erotic acid will go to UMP through UMP synthase. Now, in this step, this is very important. This is very high yield for exams. The, phosphory, the, excuse me, the phosphoribosyl group of PRPP gets added on to the pyrimidine base. And you can see in this reaction, I've highlighted it in red for you. So PRPP, which we saw back in the purine synthesis pathway, also plays a very important role in this pyrimidine synthesis pathway as well. The phosphoribosyl group of PRPP gets added on to the pyrimidine base, which forms erotatine 5-monophosphate, also known as OMP. And then that is an intermediate, which gets decarboxylated into UMP. So I didn't show that intermediate in the pathway, but just know that when you convert erotic acid to UMP, there's that intermediate step, which is only made possible by PRPP. So erotic acid goes to UMP through UMP synthase. And this is very, again, I'm gonna repeat myself because you need to know this for exams. The step where you go from erotic acid to UMP, you're using PRPP, very, very high yield. Now, the way that you can remember this is that PRPP is used in a very important step, important UMP, ump, I'm, I'm substituting that for important, obviously, but you can memorize that PRPP gets used in the very important or ump important for UMP step. So here's where we are so far. UMP will then get converted to UDP, okay? Now UDP can take one of two paths. It can either become DUDP or CTP, and there are two different enzymes that catalyze these conversions. On the left-hand side, we see ribonucleotide reductase converting UDP to DUDP, and then on the right-hand side, we see CTP synthase converting UDP to CTP. Now, I'm running out of space on the slide here, so let me just blow up the bottom part right here. So this is exactly what I was just talking about. DUDP can get turned into DUMP, and then thymidylate synthase will turn DUMP into DTMP. So lots of letters here, try not to get confused. But basically on the left-hand side of this slide, we can see the path that UDP can take going first through ribonucleotide reductase and then through thymidylate synthase. So we can, again, basically consider UDP to be a very important intermediate that selectively can take two different paths depending on the nucleotide needs of the body. We saw the same theme back when we talked in video number one on purine synthesis. We saw the same exact thing. Now, looking on the left-hand side of the slide here where DUMP gets turned into DTMP, that step, which is catalyzed by thymidylate synthase, also utilizes THF, and in that process, in that reaction, methylene THF gets converted to DHF. And that DHF-THF process actually has its own cycle 
which runs parallel with pyrimidine synthesis. So perhaps you've seen this before. If, if this is the first time you're seeing it, understand that DHF uh, goes through dihydrofolate reductase to become THF. That becomes methylene THF. And then in the reaction of pyrimidine synthesis, where we use phimidylate synthase, that methylene THF gets reduced to DHF, and you just go through that cycle repeatedly. And that's important not just for pyrimidine synthesis, but there are other biochemical pathways, other reactions in the body, other parts of USMLE and COMLEX, other topics, I should say, where that's pretty relevant. So keep that in the back of your mind. Now, if we go back to the overall pathway with UDP at the bottom of our slide, I want to highlight a few medications that can inhibit various portions of this pathway. So the first that we'll start with is leflunamide. So leflunamide inhibits that second step whereby carbamoyl phosphate is converted to erotic acid. Specifically, it inhibits the enzyme dihydroorotate dehydrogenase. Now, again, I didn't show that to you in my original pathway because I don't think it's important for you to memorize that enzyme. The only reason that that enzyme needs to be memorized is that leflunamide inhibits it, but you don't need to know about that enzyme as it pertains to pyrimidate synthesis, pyrimidine synthesis, excuse me. So leflunamide is inhibiting dihydroorotate dehydrogenase. It's the step where water is a byproduct. It's the step number two between converting carbamoyl phosphate into erotic acid. Besides leflunamide inhibiting it, you otherwise don't need to know that enzyme. Now, if we flip back to the second part of the pathway, where we see the thimidylate synthase and THF-DHF cycle here, we have various drugs that can inhibit lots of enzymes on this slide. So let me put them all on the screen now. First, we have hydroxyurea. Hydroxyurea will inhibit ribonucleotide reductase. Then we have 5-fluorouracil. 5-fluorouracil will inhibit thimidylate synthase. And lastly, we have three drugs. One is methotrexate, two is trimethoprim, and three is pyrimethamine. All three of those drugs inhibit dihydrofolate reductase. Now, I've got a couple of mnemonics for you here, which I'll throw up on the slide now. For hydroxyurea, if you remember hydroxyurea, two R's, RR for ribonucleotide reductase, you can memorize the enzyme that it inhibits. And for the last one, Dihydrofolate reductase is DR, or doctor, and the doctor prescribes methotrexate, or the doctor prescribes trimethoprim, or the doctor prescribes pyrimethamine. Whichever one you want to use there, the doctor prescribes it, which reminds me, if the doctor prescribes it, DR, it inhibits DR, dihydrofolate reductase. So that's it for pyrimidine synthesis. I know I flew through this video. It's a little bit lower yield, honestly, than purine synthesis, but if you know the drugs and the enzymes they inhibit, and you know the overall purpose or flow of the pathway, you'll be just fine for USMLE and COMLEX. Honestly, the biggest takeaway here is going to be these drugs and which enzymes they inhibit, not necessarily the pathway itself. Keep your eyes posted for part three, which will be the salvage pathway.